You're listening to the Flip Houses Like a Girl podcast, where we educate, empower, and celebrate everyday women who are facing their fears, juggling family and business, embracing their awesomeness, and wholeheartedly chasing their dream of flipping houses. Each episode delivers honest-to-goodness tools, tips, and strategies you can implement today to get closer to your first or next successful house flip. Here's your spiky-haired, breakfast taco-loving host, house flipping coach, Debbie DeBeery. Brace yourselves, folks. Debbie's got a sinus infection again. (laughs) I sound like I smoked, seriously, like 472 cigarettes in just the last, I don't know, five minutes? Oh my gosh. <clears throat> my chest feels like it too, if we're being honest. So, hey y'all. Thank you for tuning in today. And I just wanted to say that I am going to spare you from this voice of mine. And I'm going to play you the audio of one of the most popular videos that I have out there. So, you're going to hear five of my biggest lessons over my entrepreneurial career and specifically the flipping houses part. And I'm even going to spare you from my voice and I'm not going to share a listener shout out today, which wah wah, that's no fun. It's one of my favorite parts. Anyway, the more I talk, the more my throat wants to cough. So I'm going to spare you guys and I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that next week my voice is back. All right, you guys, here we go. So my five biggest lessons. Now I've been an entrepreneur since I graduated from grad school, which was in 2000. So I've always been self-employed, right? So at this point, I'm pretty much unemployable. I'm pretty sure nobody would hire me since I've never been employed by anybody other than myself. But that said, I've obviously learned a ton of stuff being an entrepreneur. And when it comes to flipping houses, specifically because it's such a male dominated industry, I've had to learn some very specific things around navigating all of that, being a female. Now, a couple of those are, the, well, the first one being learning to speak up and totally own my power. Because I can't tell you, oh, my handy dandy notes, speak up, gosh dang it, and own my power, all right? Now, there are hundreds of times over the last 13, well, 16 years since I've been in real estate, that I have been completely ignored in the aisles of Home Depot and Lowe's and other lumber stores around here. Now, I could just stand there and wait to be helped, right? I could get all pissed off and storm out. But either way, either of those options, if I choose those, I'm not getting what I want. And I'm totally giving my power away to someone else. Screw that. So that's just a very minor example of having to learn how to speak up and totally own my power. That comes from confidence and that comes from practice. And initially it comes from totally faking it. Yep, you are going to have that whole cliche of faking it until you make it. It is totally a thing. You absolutely will have to fake certain things until you actually feel those certain things. All right, and the cool thing about that is that you trick yourself into believing it. Okay. Number two, get rid of bad contractors and vendors quickly, all right? So waiting for them to finish will always, well, hold on, I don't like to use absolutes. The vast majority of the time, it will take longer and cause more anxiety and stress and worry than if you just get rid of the bad performers right away. Okay. And I know it sounds daunting and it's going to feel totally daunting. If you're in the middle of a project 
and a contractor or a vendor stops showing up or really just starts delaying things, consistently delaying things, and you can't make it stop and you can't make the project continue, you're going to have to learn to get rid of people. And it doesn't have to be, and you don't have to be a jerk about it. It's a business. I guarantee you that men don't feel like jerks when they get rid of people who aren't performing properly on their job sites. They don't feel bad. Okay. It's a business. So I had to, it took me probably six years to really take that on and to really start getting rid of people who weren't performing because I thought, I don't want to start over. Why would I want to start over with somebody else? What if they don't show up? I, I promise that based on my experience, it has always led to better outcomes when I've just gotten rid of the people who didn't show up or stopped showing up or uh, just really ghosted me, right? It doesn't happen often, but it has happened. So just get rid of people. Just get rid of the bad vendors and contractors. It is a-okay, and that's what running a business looks like sometimes, getting rid of the people who are holding you back, okay? All right, number three, commit to a decision and move on. Gosh, this one's so hard for some people. Make a decision. Look, if you don't make a decision, that is just as much making a decision as making a decision. Okay, I know that's super confusing. If you don't make a decision, you're deciding not to decide. And that is 100% a decision. So look, make a decision and move on. If it was the wrong decision, make another one. Pivot, recalibrate, and move on. You've got to be agile and flexible. You can't be super rigid in how things are going to go because things will not go the way you want them to all the time. Road bump comes up, okay, great, recalibrate. Something happens, recalibrate. Something doesn't go your way, recalibrate. You have to be able to do that. I can't stress that enough. And then move on. You can't dwell on things like, well, what if I had done this? Or if only I had done this. You cannot do that. You can only control the things right here and now. Okay, so make a decision and move on. If you need to make another decision, fine. Make another decision and move on. Okay, it's really simple. Okay, all right. Number four, don't take things too seriously. Okay, let me get this angled right. All right, don't take things too seriously. Man, oh man, oh man, this is a big one for me. Oh, fighting years of perfectionism and not wanting to look foolish and worrying so much about what other people think about me. The don't take things too seriously one is huge for me. I have decided probably since 2014 when my mom passed away suddenly that unless it's death or significant illness or injury, then all of it is small stuff and I just can't sweat it. Otherwise, if we do sweat all of those little bitty things, we're going to end up huge balls of nerves and stress and anxiety and worry and it doesn't look good on anyone. And it doesn't help us get to where we wanna go. I had to learn to laugh at myself and now I'm the first one to do so. I screw up and I laugh at myself all the time. And it's a trait that I am trying to really instill in my son because I see those perfectionist tendencies surfacing with him. He's nine and it terrifies me. It really does. I want him to just laugh about it and move on. It's just like making a decision and moving on. Just laugh, learn to laugh at yourself, be the first one to do so, and then move on. Okay. All right. Number five. This is so big. None of this is about me. None of what I do is about me. My entire life 
and business, all of my businesses, shifted when I really, really got this. Because none of what I do is about me. It's about helping the seller and making it a win-win situation. It's about the end buyer. It's about the community. It's about my family. None of this is about me though. And really when I finally got that and I got out of my own way and started approaching everything about my businesses in my life as how can I best serve? How can I best serve the sellers? How can I best serve my end buyers? How can I best serve my community? How can I best serve my family? How can I best serve my friends? How can I best serve anyone I come into contact with? Everything came into focus and became so much lighter. All right. So there you have it. Five of my biggest lessons that I've learned throughout my entrepreneurial life. All right. If you aren't already a member of our free Facebook group, go join us. The Facebook group is called Women Flipping Houses. So check us out, find us, and request to join. It's an awesome community, incredibly supportive and encouraging. And it's a safe bubble from all the negativity that's out there. Also, registration is open for the 2020 version of First Flip Done Right. So if you are sick of being on the sideline, sick of not taking action, or maybe sick of taking action, but not making any progress, that's a thing too. If you want some help, if you want an incredible support system, along with the step-by-step processes that you need to take, go to firstflipdoneright.com. All right, check out the programs that we have available for this year. And let's do this. Okay, you guys, you know what I like to say. Go out there, flip houses like a girl, leave people and places better than you find them, and make it a great day.